Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us on this edition of News 2. I'm Sandra Gamansing. Topping our newscast, millions upon millions across the nation and around the world watched as President Barack Obama gave his 2015 State of the Union address Tuesday night. We have highlights on the president's take on how the nation is doing. News 2's April Knight has details. In what could be the most scrutinized speech of any American each year, President Barack Obama stood before congressional leaders, guests, and millions of Americans watching at home to describe how America is faring. For all the grit and hard work required to come back, for all the tasks that lie ahead, know this, the shadow of crisis has passed. And the State of the Union is strong. Like in his past speeches, the president focused on the economy, saying he was dealt a tough hand from the beginning, but that the union is making progress. That progress, however, is benefiting mostly the wealthy, so he is proposing policies, including a higher minimum wage, free community college, increasing taxes for the wealthy, paid maternity leave, and equal pay for men and women, many of which are already getting Republican pushback. Well, we accept an economy where only a few of us do spectacularly well? Or will we commit ourselves to an economy that generates rising incomes and chances for everyone who makes the effort? According to the president, middle-class economy works. With this plan, he said, child care will take top priority so middle-income families can claim up to 3000 a year for each child dependent. As for foreign policy, the president pointed to Russia's isolation and shaken economy as proof that his policy, criticized by many as weak, is working well. He also pointed to other fronts in the Middle East and Europe where America is currently engaged. Climate change should be a priority, said the president, with 2014 marked as the hottest year in recorded history. The president's address got mixed reactions, certainly accusations of unwillingness to work with Republicans. But the president stuck to his message, saying tonight we turn the page and the nation is eager for a better chapter. Reporting for News 2, I'm April Knight. Meanwhile, immediately after the State of the Union address, Delegate to Congress Stacey Plaskett issued her own response. According to Plaskett, the address was inspiring and gives a clear view of the nation moving forward. Many of the progress made and felt strongly in the mainland are not as evident in the territory. Fortunately, however, we have not seen those same job growths as well as the drop in the unemployment rate in our own Virgin Islands. And it's incumbent on us to push that agenda forward and to really make the United States aware that that is in fact the case. Our utility costs are the highest in the nation, 52 cents per kilowatt. Our unemployment is more than twice the national average. And I plan on working with my colleagues in Congress to ensure that the U.S. Virgin Islands is included in the infrastructure investments, the job creations, and many of the other programs that were listed. It was courtesy of KalaluNetwork.com. Republicans also gave a forceful reaction to the president's address, and many of them accused the president of refusing to cooperate with the Republican-controlled Congress. All the president really offered last night was more taxes, more government, more of the same approach that has failed the, the middle class uh, for decades. He is squandering the last opportunity to set things right with the American people. So let's iron out loopholes to lower rates and create jobs, not pay for more government spending. The president has already expressed some support for these kinds of ideas. We're calling on him now to cooperate to pass them. We'll also keep fighting to repeal and replace a health care law that's hurt so many hardworking families. Meanwhile, the president boarded Air Force One traveling to Boise, Idaho, Wednesday, one day after giving his State of the Union address. The president made remarks at Boise State University after he toured an engineering lab. The next stop is Kansas. Governor Kenneth Mapp turned our attention to the territory will give the State of the Territory address on Monday, January 26, before a formal session of the 31st legislature. Senate President Neville James on Tuesday said he received a correspondence from Governor Kenneth Mapp requesting that the body reconvene into regular session to host the State of the Territory address. 
Senate President James said the revised Organic Act of 1954 requires that the governor presents the state of the territory during the first legislative session of the year. Governor Mapp will present that address at 7 p.m. Be sure to tune in to CBS TV 2. We will air the address live. Well, two appointments to tell you about. On Friday, Governor Mapp announced the appointment of Terry Griffiths as the acting attorney general until a permanent attorney general is appointed. Upon the appointment of a permanent AG, Attorney Griffiths will become the territory's solicitor general. Attorney Griffiths has practiced law in the USVI since 1996 and has a strong background in complex litigation and white-collar crimes. Also, Jamila Russell has been appointed as the Territorial ADA Coordinator, responsible for coordinating programs and ensuring the compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act. As a parent advocate, Ms. Russell brings to, to the office practical and first-hand experience of dealing with disability issues. Ms. Russell is a graduate of the Good Hope School and attended UVI. Acting Police Commissioner dispels some rumors. Acting Police Commissioner Delwa Richards today dispelled rumors circulating in the territory regarding his tenure with the VIPD. He said it is imperative to make the clarification as soon as possible that he remains at the helm of the VIPD and has not resigned. He said he continues to work every day with the men and women of the department on a number of issues and personally receives assessments from commanders as well as officers and civilian staff. He said he is pleased with the level of cooperation and professionalism. Well, the 31st legislature already has a busy schedule. The Senate's legal counsel told Senate President Neville James they've already received close to 190 bill drafts. James said those early numbers represent the amount of work started by the August body, and he predicts a robust agenda. He said those numbers are impressive, and it means lawmakers are serious about creating solutions for the territory's challenges. Senate President James also said senators have been reserving dates for upcoming hearings. St. Croix Elections Board finally mustered a quorum Wednesday to elect its new officers, but there were several challenges to doing even that. News News' Erica Parsons has the story. There's a new chairman in town. I, I would like to make a motion. Four St. Croix election board members were present Wednesday for the third attempt to organize the new body. She is a, a quorum of five. And we can go back and forth. So we need to pick somebody other than me okay. to be the chairman and That's just make a here. motion. Lisa Harris Moorhead made the motion to elect Liliana Bellardo de O'Neill as the new chairperson, and the vote carried two to one, though O'Neill wanted to delay proceedings. I, I would like to make a motion that we waived um, having the organizational structure in this meeting. Again, we're a minimum quorum, and um, I think that we should wait until uh, Mr. Williams and anybody else is in place. Are you ready to chase and move on and go from here? That's what we need to do. The last thing we must do that in the first meeting. This is the first meeting we have a quorum Yourself, Mrs. Mohan, and Mr. Mona can make a motion because they can't make a motion for the chair. The board approved Raymond Williams to replace Rupert Ross, but he can't participate until he's sworn in. Officials say the other two board members are on medical leave. Moorhead said the absences present extraordinary circumstances, and her preference was to wait, though she would go along with the majority. She nominated Roland Mullinar as vice chair, but he declined the position. Brian responded that they could nominate him as vice chair temporarily, which Molinar moved to do, but the motion was not seconded. Nevertheless, a majority of the four voted to have Moorhead as the interim vice chair until a new one can be elected. The board also voted to keep Glenn Webster as the secretary in a temporary capacity. Erica Parsons, News 2. Meanwhile, election supervisor Carolyn Fox said the estimated cost for the election recount was just over $18,000. That price includes eight days of work for board members, talliers, and the videographer who recorded the process for the public. Chairman Adelbert Bryan said the recount certification had no signatures. 
The other three board members who conducted the recount signed the certification and brought attention to the fact that it did not include Senator Alicia Hansen's information because of a Superior Court ruling which determined she wasn't a candidate. Bryan said the Supreme Court reversed that decision, so it needs to be included. Keeping our eye on the economy, Delta Airlines is reporting huge fourth quarter losses. The company lost $712 million. Businesses who pay so-called swipe fees to banks each time a customer uses a debit card took their case to the Supreme Court and lost. The Supreme Court ruled Tuesday that banks can charge up to 24 cents per swipe, upholding the federal cap on the fees. Here's the New York Stock Exchange with our stock market watch. The Dow, Nasdaq, S&P all up. The Dow 39, Nasdaq 12, S&P 9. Coming up on News 2, a local author and entrepreneur has decided to bring the issue of men mental illness in the territory into the open. More about a journey untold and the presentations held. Former Virgin Islands Bureau of Corrections Officer Marcel Scotland pleaded guilty last Friday in District Court on St. Croix to providing prison contraband. Court documents indicate Scotland appeared for work at the Golden Grove Correctional Facility where he was employed as a corrections officer. As he entered the facility, he was asked to present his bag for a search. When the BOC official took possession of his bag, Scotland fled. A search of the bag revealed multiple cigarette lighters, rolling papers, marijuana and multiple dime baggies. The VIPD and DEA were notified. Scotland subsequently surrendered and said he brought the items for an inmate but was unaware that drugs were present. Wallaby Hospital boards met for a special meeting on Wednesday. Board members voted to reaffirm the hiring freeze that went into effect in March 2013. The only exceptions are registered nurses and physicians or in the event of an emergency. Executives also reported that they reduced the number of traveling nurses since that time to now from 50 to 3. In other business, CEO Dr. Griffith introduced Dr. Ken Okolo as the new chief operating officer and Tim Lessing as the new chief financial officer. One of the uh, man mandates in the um, systems improvement agreement is that we, we have a strong leadership um, team to ensure um, strong operations and um, I'm very confident that Dr. Dr. Okolo will, will, be the, will be able to do that. Tim Lessing uh, is coming on as, as our chief fin financial officer. Um, al already he has hit, hit, hit the ground r r running and as you, you can hear from um, the, the discussion that we have had so far that, that he is quite cap capable and ready to lead this organization um, fi fin financially. In other news, a local author and entrepreneur has decided to bring the issue of mental illness in the territory into the open. Yasin Hall's book, Journey Untold, was presented to various schools on St. Thomas, most recently at Ivana Yudorkin High School. Students got to listen to Hall's journey that led to the publication of the book they also asked questions, as well as heard a reading of Hall's own sentiments about living with a family member suffering from mental illness. If they only know the things I've experienced to become the woman I am today, they'd probably bolt in the other direction. You see, I am the daughter of someone who lost herself to the devastating effects of mental illness. However, her disease didn't just affect her, it cheated me out of all of the special occurrences that define childhood and robbed my grandparents of a life with their daughter, my mom, Bernice. I'll never forget the day that I lost my mom for the first time and began to understand that something was very wrong. And that's an excerpt from Yasin's book. And congratulations to you, Yasin, class of 88 CAHS is, CAHS is indeed proud. 
Innovative Management's team announced that due to unforeseen circumstances, Innovative Business Offices St. Thomas location closed at noon on Wednesday and will reopen with normal business hours on Thursday. The Innovative Business Office at Tutu Park Mall in St. Thomas includes the Customer Care Department for Innovative Telephone, Cable TV, Long Distance and the Wireless Retail Store. Innovative apologizes for any inconvenience caused. Department of Public Works Commissioner-designee Gustav James advises the St. Thomas motoring public that starting tomorrow, Thursday, January 22nd, road work will commence along the access road to Crown Bay and Sub Base. The road will be completely closed to traffic. The work is expected to be completed within three weeks from commencement. Motorists are urged to utilize alternate routes as this will affect traffic along this major thoroughfare. The road will be closed in order to complete necessary repairs to the roadway. The Virgin Islands Port Authority Executive Director Carlton Dow invites all independent taxi drivers to meet with Port Authority officials to discuss new operational procedures and programs that will be implemented at the Sierra Lee King Airport on St. Thomas. That meeting will be held on Thursday, January 22nd, in the Port Authority Conference Room, located on the third floor of the administrative building, which is adjacent to the airport, and that's from 6 to 8 p.m. For more information, you can contact the VIPA Public Information Office at 774-1629. Be sure to stick around. Your news to AccuWeather forecasts coming up next.